Rostar packaging is continually innovating. They aren't where they were more than a decade ago when they won Best New Product at San Diego's Coffee Fest. They've actually gotten better, driven by their five-step plan. Step one, make better packaging. Step two, make it domestically. Step three, make it easy for small business owners. Step four, make it look awesome. Step five, world domination. It's working as they just won Best New Product at Coffee Fest New York for their new peel and stick valves tin closure. That's hard to say, but it's a win for Rostar and a win for small business. On Rostar.com, you can use their artwork templates to enable you to imagine your artwork, your logo, on a sleek coffee bag, classic tin, sticker, or label. Rostar has been and is tipping the scales to favor solo entrepreneurs and small businesses, using digital printing to offer faster turnaround times and smaller print runs for coffee roasters. In short, Rostar can help and grow your business. And on Rostar.com, you can start with a quote and end with the perfect coffee package to share your story. Now, on to the show. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Season 10 of the Coffee People Podcast. The show is part of the Roast West Coast Coffee Network and presented by Roastar Coffee Packaging. I'm Ryan Wolt, and this is the podcast where we meet really compelling human beings from all corners of the coffee industry, and we let them tell their story. In this case, we're re-meeting David Foster of Kiln Coffee in Grand Junction, Colorado. David founded Kiln Coffee with his twin brother, Jonathan, and he appeared on our 100th episode back in 2022. I'll link to that in the newsletter, which you can find on coffeepeoplepodcast.com. Or you can just tap the link in this podcast's show notes wherever you're listening. Should be right there. David is back to chat about the new children's book he co-wrote with his wife, Megan, and was illustrated by Ben Haver, called Jet Goes to Work with Dad. The book is about a young Yeti who spends a day working the coffee bar with his father and learning a few life lessons along the way. You can see some of those illustrations and learn more about the book, which is out now, in the newsletter I mentioned at coffeepeoplepodcast.com. You can also find the book for sale at various coffee shops around Colorado and on kilncoffee.com. Link in the show notes. Okay, I've got my mug of coffee. It's filled up with a lovely single origin from me and my uncle coffee. I brewed it up on the Simply Good Coffee Brewer, which frankly has been a crutch lately, as I've woken up feeling a bit lazy. I do not feel bad about it. At least not since acknowledging that just because I know how to brew a pour-over doesn't mean I have to every day, and doesn't mean I do it better than the machine. But I digress. Let's get back to the show, shall we? I hope you all enjoy this follow-up chat with Coffee Roaster, Coffee Shop Owner, baseball fan, and children's book author, David Foster of Kiln Coffee in Grand Junction, Colorado. <laughs> David, I'm, I'm glad to have you back on the show. I know who you are. You are part of one of my favorite coffee shops in Colorado, but could you remind everyone else who's listening to this show who you are, and we'll link to the show that we've done previously uh, on the newsletter. For sure. Yeah, David Foster, been co-owner here at Kiln Coffee. Dang, it's we're coming up on seven years. We're wrapping up seven years in May. And I have an identical twin brother that we run the shop together. So we started in 2017. So been in the coffee industry for, I guess, 10 plus years now. The years just keep rolling by. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we live here in Grand Junction, Colorado. And Man, it's an incredible place to live. Uh, people are great, and uh, even better, the outdoors here is just an endless playground. So, And one of my favorite uh, distilleries is not far down the road that I stop at all the time as well, Peach Street. Peach Street, yeah. Peach Street is fantastic. David, you are not, uh, I don't want to say just a coffee person, but you do more than, than coffee. Uh, you recently became a published author along with, I believe, your wife. Yeah. You wrote a book called Jet Goes to Work with Dad, children's book. I'm wondering, well, one, tell us a little bit what's the book about and what inspired it. Yeah, for sure. 
Well, first off, I think part of our identity here at Kiln is first off and foremost is uh, our like general premises, lead people better than you found them. Uh, that's what we teach our employees. And it kind of, since we talked last, like we kind of have a new training model. We kind of built it like two years ago. We talked about like two and a half, three years ago. Mm-hmm. So it kind of came out of our training model of how we train our staff and reshifting and hammering home our focus. And I think when our focus became solely, how can we impact our community and how can we communicate hospitality in a simple way, we naturally began to look for different outlets and uh, children's books. I mean, we talked a little bit about my background before with uh, special education. Um, I, I mean, read Pete the Cat books over and over and over and over again. And so very familiar with reading children's books to kids and always love children's books. And so I, I guess the, the story behind the book is kind of a multitude of things with education, coffee, also hospitality and wanting to figure out how to communicate it in a simple way. And it's funny, I, had, I think I started working on the layout of the book last February. And so February of 2023, and uh, I kind of hit a roadblock about halfway through. And uh, I mean, it's a I mean, simple concept. You think like, man, it's you just write something down. But for some reason, I hit a roadblock and I set it down for like six months. I was actually grabbing a beer with a friend, uh, him and his wife and my wife and I were together. And he just made the joke passively that if you wrote a children's book, David, I'd be super excited to read it to my kids. (laughs) <laughs> and for some reason, that comment, like literally the next day, I went to Best Slope, uh, the coffee shop right down the street from my house. And I sat there and I finished the template for it and I brought it home. And the next day, I think my wife completely reworded it and made it sound fantastic. <laughs> I told her that the first time that I read it after she had reworded a lot of it, I had an emotional experience uh, with reading the book. Uh, I was like, I didn't have that when I read it <laughs> after I wrote it. <laughs> so, I know for me, my wife uh, is just working. I'm just raw material that she's been shaping and molding for 20 years and uh, turning into something that can give back to the world. I think we got about the same story. <laughs> <laughs> the The main character in the book, Jet, how would you describe this? this yeah. I don't want to call it a, a monster or something, but it's a little kind of fuzzy guy with a uh, fuzzy little blue guy with horns. I mean, where did that yeah. visual come from? So in 20, I think it was around 2020 or maybe 2019, we gave a project for camping mugs to a student that was a senior at CMU. John and I just really loved the stuff he was creating on his social media and said, hey, we have these two camping mugs And just kind of gave him a project, gave him no guidelines, just wanted to see what he can create. And he created one of the things we immediately said yes. And the other one incorporated two little, two blue Yetis that uh, they were essentially back to back. One of them's a Yeti, one of them's a, what, I think the Yeti is the snow and then the summer is the um, Sasquatch. And so drinking coffee in every season was essentially the concept with it. And what's funny is, When I saw it initially, I was like, oh, that doesn't really fit our identity. And my brother's like, what are you talking about? It's two two dudes drinking coffee in every season. (laughs) That sounds like us. (laughs) And so uh, we decided to roll with it. And uh, what's funny is now it's become so much a part of our brand. And that's where Jet came from. When we told him we wanted to create this story, he said, you can use one of those characters as the dad and create a son character. Um, and he, he literally, I think he created it like the next day and we're just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this idea, you, you, first of all, I wanted to say congratulations because procrastinating for six months, uh, is what separates a writer from the rest of the world. <laughs> that is absolutely what makes a writer. Secondly, you have this template you that you've gone through. Your wife is reworded. You have this visual kind of concept. What's the next step in developing this into an actual physical book? Yeah. So we just released it on uh, March 8th, I think. It's available on all the major platforms online. And uh, we're selling it here in the shop. And we also, um, we're wholesaling it too. Because 
So, I mean, to be like pretty forward, like print cost is around like 10 bucks. And so we're wholesaling it for around like, I think the wholesale comes to like 1125 a copy. And so we're not looking to profit a ton off it. It's more so trying to like push uh, what we believe in um, and just trying to get it out there. And so we're kind of just trying to get on every outlet that we can as far as just trying to, the whole concept of the book was throughout the storyline, the little character Jet um, is excited to go to work with his dad and uh, he finds his way uh, in the coffee shop, uh, just making a bunch of mistakes with all the things that he felt like he can do um, or was excited to do with his dad. And then at the end of the story, he just continues, continues on through the mistakes at the end of the story he realizes that his jobs, his dad's job, most important part of his job is to put a smile on somebody's face. And he finds out that he can do that pretty well uh, just by being himself. And so that's really the, really the most powerful thing that we wanted to encourage. As far as I feel like in our culture, we often have this idea or notion that we should be great at something. And if we aren't great at something, pretend like we're great at something and hide the mistakes as opposed to, being willing to have the conversations and accept the mistakes is a learning as an operating point that we could learn from. And if at the end of the day, we're looking across the other, across in front of us, that there's a person there. Um, and the most important thing is putting a smile on that person's face, just being kind. Then uh, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good place to be. <laughs> I don't want to to say this is the only reason, but I read the draft copy you sent me. Uh, right before I took the tri- a trip to New York. Okay. And I feel like it made me a more forgiving, <laughs> grace-filled person as I was wandering around the city. So uh, thank you for That's that. That's awesome. The The character in the book, uh, his, his dad is conveniently a coffee shop mm-hmm. uh, uh, person. Yeah. So very similar in your real life. You mentioned earlier your experience reading with kids. What about reading with your kids? Did your kids read this book and give their approval beforehand? Did they, you know, what was the uh, the audience like that you envisioned for it? In the yeah, life? for sure. Um, I don't have kids. It's actually my brother. My brother has two kids. Your brother yeah. has uh, so Well, let me start that over then, David. I apologize. For some reason, I got that no, mixed you're good. up. <laughs> 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 See, we make mistakes. I'm going to leave that in at the end of the show. Say, hey, I just screwed this one up. Uh, you mentioned reading with kids earlier in your in your career in education. Did you think about who the audience of this book was going to be? Did you read it to any kids? Was there anyone that gave their approval, their thumbs up before you hit that, you know, that send to publish? Yeah, button? for sure. Uh, first, when we created the characters, uh, we had a character board and we sent it out to probably about 20 parents to show their kids and just asked um, what they thought of the characters. Because we were kind of nervous with the Yeti characters. We weren't sure, okay, will they be received as like scary or they will, will they be received as fun? And so we just asked for responses as far as um, how they felt or what they thought about the characters or what if it made them feel sad or happy. And we had a really good response to it. And so we actually didn't have any negative responses. And I fully expected there to be it. So I feel like I was one of those kids. I was just terrified of everything. <laughs> and so uh, we had a, a lot of really positive expo- responses. And so that was our first. And when we created the first printed draft, we had the illustrator went and got a couple copies just printed in town. And it was just like big on big pieces of paper. And I passed it around to a handful of my friends in the community here to read to their kids and had some fun responses. And so uh, um, I think a lot of it for us, at least, I mean, maybe had to do with the fun responses where a lot of those kids have a lot of connections here with coming into the coffee shop and just feeling like it's this extension from their home, which is fun. Like one of the things that we do in the shop is we have little Biscoff cookies that we give to kids when they come in uh, for free a lot of kids naturally have become like associated, like this is the place where I come and get a cookie. And so I love coming here with my dad <laughs> or I love coming here with my mom. And so uh, we've always just loved hanging and being around kids. And I think it helps bring life into perspective. Kids have a way of doing that. <laughs> That's something I was thinking when you said you, you sent it out to get responses is children generally don't hold back when they have a negative opinion of something. Oh, yeah. And so you would have heard yeah. it if it was there. Yeah. 
How about for you? I mean, I believe this is your first book. Yeah. What does it feel like now that it's kind of out there in the world? Do you feel like it was a positive kind of creative expression? Do you see yourself writing more books, collaborating with your wife on those types of projects? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I I think we loved the process. It definitely was a big process. And getting to the finish line was, man, the amount of joy that we received from this project, just like, I mean, even if the impact is just a handful of people. Um, I think the amount of joy that we've received personally through the process has been, I mean, it's been like a little hobby love project uh, for us. And so I think in and of that, that's the, the greatest worth that we've gotten. We're grateful if it's just that. I think, so the, the illustrator likes the idea of having a collection and uh, he designed it. He designed the logo and everything to have a collection if we ever wanted to do that. Um, and so actually my, so my brother has two kids, his son, his son's name is Jed, J E D. Um, and he is eight. And then, uh, they have a daughter named Nora that's 10 and, uh, their summer project this summer, cause they got super jazzed when they read the book for the first time, their summer project this summer is to create, uh, some outlines for some book ideas. And so maybe Jed and Nora will help us uh, write some uh, follow-ups to Jed's adventure. So, <laughs> Very cool. Well, that was my, one of my questions was what piece of advice would you give someone who's thinking about writing a children's book who has not written one before? Yeah. Um, I think collaborations uh, big. The, I mean, the biggest thing is, I mean, starting off with um, what you want to communicate. Because I think oftentimes you just like a, the most important part of a children's book is communicating some sort of value and bringing that uh, uh, into fruition and communicating it in a very simple way, figuring out who your audience is. And then also, I mean, that simple writing uh, mantra of write what you know. <laughs> the character of Jet was inspired by, so I don't remember if we talked about this before on previous podcasts, but um, every Christmas Eve, we give all of our staff the day off and that morning it's just the me and my wife and my brother and his wife and my brother's two kids hang out behind the bar and we do free drip coffee that day and um, they help us out behind the bar. Nora is incredible at running the cash register, mostly by herself. Auntie Maggie hangs out with her and makes sure uh, things get done correctly, but she's pretty on point. And then uh, Jed, this is the first year that Jed like was incredible at, he pulled shots of espresso over and over again. And that kid like did not pull a bad <laughs> shot. <laughs> this is the eight-year-old, if eight I year recall. Old, yeah. Uh, so he has so much joy-filled energy. So kind of the joy-filled energy like definitely inspired the character of Jet. Jet did not make near as many mistakes as Jet did. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's fun, like Jed, actually, my brother's son learned how to make coffee at home for his uh, mom in the mornings. He really wanted to learn how to make a pour over. And so uh, every single time he makes a pour over for her in the morning, he'll, and if he lands right on the three minutes, 30 seconds, he'll bring the cup of coffee into his mom and say, mom, this is a perfect cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I went to work with my parents as a kid, mostly so they didn't have to hire babysitters, but uh, I spent my youth running around in a restaurant, and uh, I know that now, s several decades later, I still take those memories and those lessons with me and, and think about those that time I got to spend with my parents where they could have just been gone yeah. at work and, and how valuable that was. Since you, uh, this is a coffee show and you do own a, a great coffee shop, uh, I was at Kiln over the holidays, uh, winter holidays. Mm -hmm. And I think we ordered like four or five drinks. Uh, I'm going to be coming back through here in the spring. What is new at Kiln for the spring? In the springtime. What, when are you coming? May or? No, I'll be driving through uh, in the first week of April on my way to SCA. Oh, awesome. Oh, sweet. We have three staff members that'll be there. Uh, so I'll be busy that week. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we have uh, our managers going out there. And then our manager was out for two months uh, with a, uh, ACL surgery and uh, we had two gals step up and those gals had only been with us for like four months at the time, five months. 
and they stepped up and uh, ran ran the show on the weekends while she was out. And so kind of their reward uh, as a thank you for that was sending them to SCA with our manager. <laughs> so um, they're headed out there. Cool. Um, the spring, obviously the book's a new thing. We are working on a project right now with our designer. So the guy that illustrated the book, his name is Ben Haver. He's just an incredible artist. And he had always wanted to illustrate a book. And so that was also part of it. When he said he wanted to illustrate a book, I was like, we're going to make it happen. Uh, <laughs> he, we're currently working on a, a sister company uh, for Kiln. Under, uh, we're cur- currently creating a tea brand. Uh, we've actually um, already imported a, a handful of teas. And so that's kind of the stuff that we're messing with. And the brand itself won't be released, I think, until June or July. But you'll see, you're already seeing kind of trickles of it in the shop. A few of the teas are already up on our team menu. But uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, congratulations on that as well. What did I miss today? Did I did I not ask something about this book that you wanted to share? Or is there anything else we should know? Um, Not necessarily. I mean, the major thing, I so as far as the book goes, I, I joked around with John because uh, a lot of our, our training for the shop, like I mentioned earlier, has kind of shifted. And a big part of it was over this a year and a half ago or so, we kind of went on a journey of reading a ton of, are you familiar with Simon Sinek? Uh, no. Reading a bunch of Simon Sinek stuff. He, he has a lot of stuff on leadership. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I would have expected you to have read it because I feel like the way that you communicate and embody like your values just seems like a, yeah. influenced by Simon Sinek. <laughs> um, I'm just winging it over <laughs> here. <laughs> but uh so we kind of shifted a lot of our values to starting with why, why we do what we do. I feel like we've always been a people first company, but we realized the importance of being able to communicate that and communicate it well. And so starting off with employees of um, here's why we do what we do. We leave our, your job is to leave people better than you found them. The, after we kind of sit down and have a conversation with them, we give them three things that we look for when they go behind the bar. Um, one of those things is taking initiative. Um, another one of those things is uh, not being afraid to make mistakes, make mistakes and learn from your mistakes along the way. We realized that when, when we made that a value, oftentimes when you do make a mistake behind the bar, it kicks in this anxiety of like, oh my gosh, I messed this up. I feel terrible. Everybody else around me is probably looking at me like I'm an idiot. But when you have that as a value, don't be afraid to make mistakes and learn along the way. It takes that off. And it takes that off that pressure off of them. Like, oh, I just made a mistake. My job is to move on. And not only takes the pressure off of them, but it also the staff around them recognize it like, oh, it's just another mistake. Like they're learning along the way and they're figuring it out. And so we realized how much it changed the culture uh, behind the bar. Because the reality, if you think that you're going to make every drink correctly behind the bar, um, or if you think you're going to interact with everybody perfectly, it's just not going to happen. It's not a human thing. <laughs> and so uh, we realized how much that embedded uh, into our culture, a lot more healthy atmosphere. And so uh, a lot of those conversations is what inspired the um, storyline of Jet. I joked around with my brother, like, when we hire people now, we should just hand them, <laughs> hand them Jet goes to work and say, hey, here's your training manual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, a lot of those lessons apply to a lot of other things, right? If you realize that you make mistakes, but also other people make mistakes, it's easier to move forward from those and just pivot as, you know, they, they hit your path and, and say, oh, well, that was a mistake and now we're going to fix it or we're going to modify yeah. or change our, our, our route. So very cool. I'm very excited uh, for you. I know how exciting it is to publish a book and get that out in the world. For me, it's more of just a re- release of anxiety than anything, but I'm glad they get out yeah. there. And uh, I'm excited to share this one with the listeners of this book. If you, if anyone is listening uh, wants to see this coffee book, uh, I'll share links in the newsletter and, of course, in the, in the podcast show notes, so you'll be able to find them there. David, thank you so much for coming back and for reaching out when you knew that this book was coming out. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you thought of us. For sure. Thanks so much, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing what you do. Okay, some key takeaways from the podcast. The mission at Kiln Coffee and the lesson David and Jonathan tried to impart in their training of the Kiln team 
is to leave people better than you found them. David's foray into writing a children's book didn't come without some foundation. In his previous career in special education, he spent a lot of time reading to kids. But he couldn't complete this vision for Jet Goes to Work with Dad without the collaboration with his wife, Megan, and the skills of illustrator Ben Haver. Even then, he hit a momentary roadblock. In my experience, a lot of writing is processing and procrastinating until there is a breakthrough, which comes in the form of inspiration, support, sometimes even guilt, that an idea has been left uncompleted. But that may just be me. This book has more than a few life lessons. The first, and perhaps most prominent, is that we all make mistakes, and it's okay. I made a few in this episode. The book, as it follows Jet's day at the cafe, also shares the Kiln mission to share their passion for supporting others in the form of service. As someone who, like Jet, has worked with his dad, I can say it is worth it, even if you, like me and my dad, don't always have the same method of problem solving, or even viewpoints on the world. Still worth it, as is reading books and reading books to your kids. I'll share illustrations from this one, updates from Kiln, and the links to order in the newsletter found at coffeepeoplepodcast.com. You could also head directly to kilncoffee.com to order some Colorado roasted coffee and keep an eye out for that new tea program that they're introducing. That's one more Coffee People conversation in the books. Thank you for listening to the stories of Coffee People, for letting yourself be inspired by their creative and entrepreneurial efforts. And thank you for supporting this podcast by listening, sharing, and sometimes choosing the paid newsletter option on coffeepeoplepodcast.com. Helping us bring this episode to you is this podcast's presenting sponsor, Roastar Coffee Packaging, found at roastar.com. We also have some incredible coffee industry partners. Our legacy partners, they've been with us the longest, include Zumbar Coffee and Tea, Steady State Coffee Roasting, Moster Coffee Company, Coffee Cycle Roasting, Marea Coffee, and Cape Horn Green Coffee Importers. We always give a special thank you to the presenting sponsors of our Coffee Smarter efforts, Crossings Coffee and Hasea Coffee Source. And a thank you to all of our foundation builders, our full city partners, including Ignite Coffee Company, Ascend Coffee Roasters, Ascento Coffee Roasters, Civets Roasting Machines, San Franciscan Roasters, Me and My Uncle Coffee, Craft 42 Roasters, and Cozy Canine Coffee. That's all for today. If you made it this far, and I hope you did, thank you. Hit me up on Instagram at Roast West Coast, or send us an email roastwestcoast at gmail.com if you have a question about coffee or a guest you would like to see on the show. This podcast, Coffee People, is part of the Roast West Coast Coffee Network. This episode is, was, has been written, produced, and recorded by me, Ryan Wolt. I hope this episode has found you happy, healthy, and with at least a thread of sanity left, enabling you to make it through the day. Always tip your baristas, and be sure to drink good coffee. If you are in the early stages of your coffee journey, we want to support you. Check out the Coffee Smarter Education Podcasts. Coffee Smarter is designed to enable coffee drinkers to brew a better cup of coffee at home. And Coffee Smarter Pro covers industry-specific topics for baristas, roasters, shop owners, and aspiring coffee professionals. You'll find both shows on your favorite podcast platforms or on our website at coffeesmarterpodcast.com. Before we go too far, I have to know, is that just a tiger on your hat or does the tiger represent something? Uh, The tiger is twofold. It's the uh, Hanshin Tigers in Japan. They play out of Osaka. And uh, I actually told my wife that if she got me this hat, this the uh, high school that she teaches at is uh, they have their mascot is the Tigers.
So I told her she got me the hat, and uh, I would go to, I'd wear it to the sports games at the high school and go to the games with her. 